This is a unboxing of a <coughs> Skywatcher Flex Tube 200P um, telescope. This is a Dobsonian. I've already set up the uh, stand for it, the base. This is a Skywatcher Flex Tube 250P. That's 10 inch the size of the parabolic mirror of this. And I've already set up that. That's part of the furniture as if but this one is actual telescope the optical tube the, the thing about this tube which uh, made me order one was that it's a Dobsonian but at the same time because it is it is quite compact you can uh, practically fold it and if we reduce to the size that you can see here is around 80 centimeter and it has two millimeter, uh, sorry, two two inches uh, eyepiece uh, adapter focuser, and that is a good point. So let me just take out the individual items, and let's see what is inside. Okay, I can see a quite chunky piece. Let me just use both my hands and just extract this. Okay, now I have not set up the tube upright and I'm going to remove the plastic from the top. Okay, I'm removing the plastic. It's quite delicate optical instrument, very precise. As you can see, it has a dust cap, like a shower cap for the top part of it and a separate cap for the optical part. I've heard people saying that by removing this stopper here you can actually shut it tight so it will not be this gap of one inch here and you can use this uh, dust cap on the top part. It will be completely isolated. Have a look around it. It has a, a swiveling uh, axis here, uh, handles for um, using it, carrying it, or guiding it. These are the screws that you can loosen up and extend the uh, four um, individual bars to extend the tube. That is the massive uh, eyepiece. Uh, Focuser, and you can see the size there. I'll go from the other side and show you. And you can see the massive uh, eyepiece focuser from this angle, and this is a 10 inch telescope, 250 milliliter, millimeter, and the focus 1200. So and the f number or focal ratio of this, which means that how wide you can see the sky, uh, the angular width of the sky to see through this. It's quite good. It's less than 6, 5.7 or 8. I'm now going to lift it and put it on the stand and see how it will do. Wish me luck. I'm now going to lift it and put it on the stand and see how it will do. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm now going to put the uh, optical assembly tube into the base the stand and as you can see it has a handle for carrying for 1.4 eyepieces a space also for two inch eyepieces here so let's do it now oh that was easier than what i thought <laughs> you must try it with the uh, german equatorial man to know what i mean how easy it is those are difficult Okay, this is the eyepiece holder. Look at it. How chunky it is. I have got this eyepiece for that. Three very good eyepieces. Good quality. Top-notch. Uh, Max Vision ones. And I'm going now to extend the tube and probably have a look into the mirror. Now, as you can see, I've extended tube and this is the full length of the telescope. I can say this is around 100 50 or 40 
and how easy it is to maneuver it around. So you can make it up to the lowest point, which is, and it stays the way that it is. You can extend it almost horizontal, yeah. And if you want to go the opposite way, it doesn't go that way. What you will do, you turn the base. And again, there is a handle here. You will turn it like that. And now let us see the actual optical assembly tube. That's the cap, dust cap. And this is the beautiful mirror of this lovely telescope. And this is inside the diagonal mirror and that's the cap you can see. Now let me remove the cap. That's the first light. Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful? This is the best more portable Dapsonian you can ever see. It's amazing. Of course, this is the telescope itself. It looks like a Keck telescope or like a Pont Mont Palomar. And uh, that's a giant mirror. And this is the instruction manual. Uh, astronomical telescope user guide. A brochure introducing the different products from the manufacturer. 10 millimeter eyepiece, 25 millimeter eyepiece, which is a wide angle. So I'm going to use that. And this is what we were looking for. That's the eyepiece holder. What before that we can do, look it at the, look at the uh, viewfinder. As you can see, this is the viewfinder. On its own is a different, is a, is a telescope on its own. I can say this is probably around 50 millimeter and uh, quite, Impressive size for eyepiece. I can use it as a telescope. Now I'm going to put the viewfinder here. It's very easy. It's a dovetail bracket. It slides here. So I'm going to do it now and uh, I will show you the result. I cannot just stop admiring the ease of uh, installation in this telescope. Everything is so easy to work with. Telescopes, you know that. Even the smallest one with the German equatorial one. Are a pain to work with. This is such a giant telescope and it's so easy. Okay, I've installed the viewfinder, uh, yeah, the viewfinder, and I'm now removing the cap of it to show you the lens. This is the first view of the lens. Beautiful. And I'm now going to remove this lens cap on the end part of it. And let us see how it looks if I look through this viewfinder. It should be a wide angle view. I noticed that uh, the telescope a little bit slides down. So probably I should put a adjust the tension and the spring or whatever I have to do here. I'm sure there is something for that. And uh, anyway, um, that's something that I have to read the manual for that. At the moment, I'm not going to interfere with this. I'm just putting the lens cap, removing the lens cap from the, this cap from the viewfinder, just to be able. This is the IP solder, and this is the adapter for two to one. 0.1 inch and I will just loosen up the, ski, uh, the screws and let it fit into that place. This is the eyepiece holder and this is the adapter for 2 to 1.1 1 .1 inch and I will just loosen up the, ski, uh, the screws and let it fit into that place. I've now fitted that uh, adapter and I will remove the cap here oh 
Oh, it's wonderful. I can now adjust this also to hold it in place. This is the view for the eyepiece and you can see the roof. Now I'm going to put the eyepiece into this and look at some views. Delighted to tell you that this is a Super Plus old 25 millimeter multi-coated 52 degrees true field of view. And uh, we, when you buy a telescope from a sky watcher, they give you good eyepieces, but this one is a super good because this is a plus super plus cell eyepiece with a very wide angle view. See, I've now installed the eyepiece, quite impressive size. I probably I have to remove this connection because that looks a little bit too high. And I'm sure that I can because there is a, a T adapter here which can go into this space. I will do it and I will make it shorter. Uh, as I mentioned, I have now removed that length of the adapter that increases the focal point, which can be good, but at the moment I don't want that and I can put this with a shorter focal length here. You can see I've now done it and I'm going to focus on some distant object. By the way, this is a focuser knob uh, and its own is very good. I've seen that they have on the higher model of this, they have a fine focuser, fine travel focuser there that actually can you, add, you can adjust it for very refined uh, focusing. Uh, we will see, probably just a change of the wheel or something I can do with that. I have to see, it. maybe it's interchangeable, you don't need the whole thing. If they can have such a thing, I may go for that option also later. For using this telescope, I use another uh, Skywatcher refractor, that means with the lens, the long one, the traditional way of imagining a telescope. And I can say the picture, the image you see with this is superior, clear, crystal clear. You could see individual rocks in the far distant buildings, individual uh, grains, specks of the dust, and the overall shape of a lichen on a tree, far away trees. That's amazing quality. I'm really happy I got this. And guess what? This was not bought new. It was bought new. It was on 18th July. But I bought it as a second hand and uh, for a real bargain price of 350 from auction site. That's amazing. This is a teles telescope that will, will have cost in the past probably 1000, 2000 pounds. And the new is actually that price, around 900 pounds. And in this step, I can just dismantle it now. I've put all the lens cap. Now I collapse the telescope back. Okay, I already have put the telescope down. Now I put the cap on it. The cap is back. And now remove the viewfinder. I found that this uh, 10 inch actually sky watcher is easier to use than the 12 inch. 12 inch is a little bit too cumbersome, too big even for lifting and uh, unfolding it. So it's easy, manageable, I can sit on the little chair and just do what I have to do. It's a nice experience with this sky watcher, 250. Oh, what a night. Uh, Orion Nebula, uh, M42, M45 plates, uh, plates, double cluster, uh, name it, I've seen it. <laughs> M37, M38. Mm, now it's now around 5 o'clock and uh, in the morning. And I can just have a last look and go. This is this APM 20mm is amazing. The best IPS wheels. I don't need to need nudge the tube so much. We have also deep frost as you can see. You can see here. Everything frosty. I've covered it with this cover before. Every time I was getting cold, jumped into a warm room. Then coming back.
This is a Skywatcher Plex Tube 250P and it's a 10 inch telescope refractor Newtonian collapsible and it has a focal length of 200, 1200 and a diameter of 254. Now looking at the uh, <laughs> plates M45 using this APM 100 degree 20 millimeter eyepiece. I can see nebulosity in it. It's, it's only visible in the astrophotos, but I can see with this telescope nebulosity in it. And I can see the nebula around the play the stars, Meropa and others, is actually brighter than what is around the, uh, the Orion Nebula belt stars. Quite brighter.